You know, I ranted on this film before. I still have that rant up. I'm going to put it down below for those who want to see that old rant where a very nice guy had sent me the DVD. And I ripped up the cover. I didn't destroy the DVD though because I knew one day I had to review this series and that means I would have to tackle this movie again. And that is literally the absolute worst film in the franchise. One of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. And I never need to see this again. And this is nothing against the guy who sent it. I think he knew this would come. In. This is against the people who made this fucking movie. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If you don't take it out of the garage, it's going to rust. Well, what more can I say about the film other than that? <clears throat> Clive Turner wrote, produced, directed, and starred in this fucking movie. Whatever his job is now, he should be fired just for doing that. This movie... I could yell, scream, and shout, but I don't want to hurt my voice. I really don't. It's like three minutes in. Why is so bad? I did a rant on this already to explain it. Okay, if you want, I don't know, 90 minutes of horrible country music. Jokes, dialogue, for example, going, oh, I can't do that. I'll get armoritis. Well, yeah, watch out for your knees. You'll get pneumonia. Well, that'd be better than small cocks. Well, hey, I got some diphtheria. Or if you want jokes where one guy sits down, takes a shot, and then drinks a bottle, does this with his glasses. A second guy sits down, takes a shot, has a bottle, does this with his glasses. Then a third guy sits at the bar, takes a shot, does this with a bottle, and this with his glasses. <clears throat> or they have a conversation about how the urinals are small. And one guy mentions, oh, I guess you got a cocktail weenie. You got a lot of square dancing, line dancing, where people have their thumbs in their hips and they look bored as hell. They look like they're living through hell. They look like they're in pain. They look like they got a little old, this bottle up their ass. That's how they look like. They don't look like they're having fun. And they also, anytime they do square dancing, well, at least one time I noticed this, they're in a black void. Like, literally, the... It's like anytime they do square dancing, line dancing, however you want to call it, they're in a black void. I'm like, great, it's the American bandstand from hell. With a lot of shitty country music songs being sang. Like, the movie stops. 
so we could go back to the bar and hear more shitty country music songs including what was that song stand up and testify yeah I won't testify I won't stand up and testify because in a court of law after I sue your ass for wasting my fucking time my fucking sanity my fucking brain cells which died from watching your brain dead movie Can I testify for that shit? Your fucking brain cells committed suicide while watching your piece of shit movie. <clears throat> oh my god, some dirt got into Poppy's chili. Oh my god, a guy ate some chili. He got the farts and the lead is laughing. Yeah, the lead who is the writer, producer, director of this movie. When he's laughing in that scene, it's feel like he's laughing at the audience who wasted their time watching his fucking movie. There's, there's not one decent thing, not just good, not one decent thing I could say about this movie, other than it's now fucking oh wrong one. It's now fucking broken. What do you have in this movie? A skeleton in the dirt, and it's dead. And a guy says it's dead. And one of our leads who's, who's an inspector says, Very good, Watson. The guy's like, Who's Watson? And Clive Turner is on this motorcycle as if he's a badass. Goes into town. And the inspector meets this priest guy who deals with the occult. And for some fucking reason... Clive Turner wanted to meld Howling 4, 5, a teeny bit of 6, and link it to this movie. Because they're like, oh, that dead body was found when the circus left. And, hey, look at this crowd at the circus. And I'm like, is that the one from part 6? The Freaks? Oh, there's Mary Lou. And I'm like, Mary Lou? You mean the girl from part 5? Well, she's the villain in this. The villain from part five. Great. I didn't even like that movie. But yes, this movie is much worse than that one. Running jokes are not even jokes. And they don't even run. They don't even trot. They don't even limp. They don't even fall. They stand still. Like George Jones. Who's George Jones? And like 10 people throughout the film asked, who's George Jones? I'm I'm even like, who the fuck is George Jones? And why the fuck should I care? I wish it was George Foreman to put your face into his fucking, make some fucking steaks and hamburgers on his fucking grill. So we get some Clive Turner burgers. Clive Turner and them a square dancing in a black void or him and some assholes are dancing and sweeping wearing sombrero hats they get that stupid thing with the glass and the bottle and the fixing their glasses one then two then three people do it I'm like this is what this guy thought was funny or clever or interesting or good or decent Okay? You fucking kidding me? You know how sometimes people nonchalant say, I could make a better movie? I could make a better movie than Clive Turner did with this movie. I know I have. There's more fucking people, me sitting on my ass doing a review for an hour, got more enjoyment out of it than anyone who's ever seen this piece of shit movie. So technically, yeah, I did make a better movie. Only this asshole got paid for it. Because at least you're not going to hear a lot of old folks singing shitty country music songs. I didn't like the American Bandstand from Hell. And it cuts to the priest and inspector talking. And the priest telling all these stories about Howling Five. 
And the cop going, I gotta go to the nearest bar. Yeah, he's so fucking bored, he needs to get drunk. The lead talks into a tape recorder, and Clive Turn talks to a tape recorder as if he's deep. Yeah, you're as deep as a fucking bathtub. And let's read these shitty jokes about small urinals, and more shit music, and more line square dancing, and then the shit red vision. And one guy dies. How does he die? Well, you see his hand die. You see his hand die, that's it. And then get to the fucking priest and the specter talking to Din. Talking more about Halloween 5. Showing footage of Halloween 5. And I will admit, when they show footage of Halloween 5 and you only see like 30 seconds or a minute, First off, it, sadly, it is a better movie than this. But even from that, it looks like a damn good movie based on it. And what's weird, the guy talks for like 30 seconds and already the cop's like, Oh, I want to take a break. The guy just talked for 30 seconds and you want a break? And apparently the Count in Part 5, who died, told a priest while he was dying. And then the photographer who lived in Part 5, he died and Mary Lou escaped and now she's in this town. So a woman is in Clive Turner the leads his room looking at a suitcase and they find audio cassettes of George Jones and once again so who's George Jones? Yeah, more shit jokes. Again, this is the writer, producer, director, actor. And a lot of these jokes, he's the ones telling them, Clive Turner. And he goes, well, I'm into necrophilia and bestiality. Eh, I guess I'm fucking a dead horse. I guess kind of like how people say I'm beating a dead horse. And I'm like... I'm doing this because I'm getting a headache. I'm seriously getting a headache. And like another joke is this old fuck saying, I want water. W A T T E R. Water. Yeah, give me some water and I'll drink it, then I'll piss in your face. Who's George Jones running jokes? And. Who is your pappy scene? I'm like, fuck no, I'm tired of you fucking seeing them. That's where you stand up and testify. Yeah, after I murder everyone in the cast, you have to stand up and testify against me. Yeah, when I get my fucking foot up your ass and sue your ass. You wasted my fucking time and for killing my fucking brain cells. You murdering my brain cells. So I'll stand up and testify for that. Bullshit. A few more people die from a red POV vision. Dirt and poppy's chili. And a guy likes to fart. And women find clothes in the dumpster and they're like, Oh, there's a it's fucking pain on them, not blood. And then for some reason, the fucking girl from part four, the lead girl in part four, fucking calls the priest, and then we get footage from part four. Which I will say, when you show it for like 30 seconds to a minute, you make part four look decent. And then the town finds the tape recorder the lead, and he was writing an expose on the town, because he was paid to do it. That a, He was told that there's a lot of crooks there. And then they, the first time I ranted on this, I had not seen part four and five, so this shit was confusing me. But the fact that I've seen part four and five, it's still fucking confusing, but it's even more aggravating and stupider. Because now it's saying, oh, by the way, I missed this. Now, the girl from part four who had talked to the priest and was just thrown in there because... There's a shot where Red Vision, POV, 
I just pulled the girl off the balcony and now the girl from part four is dead. I'm like, so the girl from part four, the lead girl in part four, I just barely had a death scene from falling off a balcony that the world pulled her from? It's like, oh yeah, well, when she went to Drago and she was mind controlled from the werewolf in this movie, who's the werewolf in part five, oh yeah, and Clive Turner the lead in part five? I mean, the, the, the lead in this, Clive Turner the lead in this? He's also the same guy in part five who was, he was in the snow. Remember when I reviewed part five and I liked the shot where the werewolf exploded from the snow and I'm like, did the guy die? And later on you see a body in the snow. Oh, well he lived and it's the same guy. Yeah, because Clive Turner worked on four, five, and this one. And he had bit parts. So he actually wrote, he connected those characters from the five and this one. He actually connected them. Oh yeah, the guy that was in the snow in part five, we thought was dead. No, he, he's this guy, the lead guy. And now the girl from part four, who is mind controlled to call Clive Turner to get him there in this complicated fucking Mission Impossible fucking plot. And the girl set up Clive Turner, but the cop, he's figured it out. And so they set up the girl, and you have the shittiest werewolf transformation in fucking history. Literally the shittiest. Watch my friend Mike OCP's review, the first or second part. He shows the footage. So watch his rant on it. Just vibe fucking put in this video. Appears getting a fucking virus from me. And literally busts out of a door. A bunch of people with guns. Shoots. We don't see the werewolf die. We just. They shoot. It goes straight away. To more music. At the bar. Shitty country songs. They say sorry Ted. The Clive Turner's here Ted. And more shitty country songs. For the end credits. And I knew if I yelled and screamed, I would lose my voice. And I didn't want to hurt my voice because of this fucking movie. <sighs> Fuck you, Howling Seven. You're one of the worst goddamn movies I've ever seen in my life. For one of the worst goddamn horror film franchises I've ever seen in my life. Yes, I said it. Part 1 is okay, but overrated. It's got some damn good special effects, though. Part 2 is dumb fun at least. Part 6, that was decent. Other than those three, every one of these fucking movies can go fuck themselves. Part 3 can go fuck itself. 4 can go fuck itself. 5 can go fuck itself. This could go fuck itself the most, and the next one could go fuck itself too. And I got one more goddamn movie to talk about. I'm tired of this fucking franchise. I'm tired of these fucking assholes. I'm tired of Clive fucking Turner. I'm tired of Howling 7, New Moon Rising. I'm glad I never have to talk about this fucking movie ever again. Otherwise, I'll punch a hole through 